Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to Practical Church Planting, where in 15 minutes or less, we'll give you practical tips, advice, and encouragement to help you plant and grow healthy churches. My name is Brian Androzian, and joining me today is Dylan Dotson. What's going on? And today we're talking about things to think through when it comes to meeting together pre-launch. So I'll share some of our story real quick, and then some of the things we would have done differently, some things we did well. Um, so we said we wanted to launch in January of 2017, so whatever, certain time. Um, and... Uh, I didn't know what I was doing. I got some advice that I would not give other people. And we started, basically we had a, a couple of vision nights, which I would recommend. They're about a month apart and things that we're doing. And then we started having monthly um, team gatherings, which I was like, this isn't good because it was once a month. I mean, we try to do stuff in the community, but like as our team to get together, our launch team, yeah. once a month. And I was like, well, if you missed one, then you didn't see someone for two months. Some people didn't know each other. And those were just like, it was just, a, it was a total fail. And so basically what really started to happen when we really started to get momentum is when we started to meet weekly together as a team. So the first thing we, I would say when it comes to meeting pre-launch is to create a consistent time together to meet. Now, it doesn't have to necessarily be, you know, a week out every single week in the very beginning, but people need to know it's not going to be like once a month, like what's going on. It needs to be a consistent time. It can't be like this Sunday, we're going to meet at four o'clock. And then in three weeks on Thursday, we're going to meet at seven. Like It needs right. to be a consistent time where people know that they're going to see each other, that they know that they can invite things people to. Because part of it was like a launch team meeting sound, sounded very official. And it was only once a month. It was really hard to invite people to. So first thing we would say is create a consistent time to gather and so you can invite. And this was actually what helped attract you to New City Church. It's true. When we uh, came on board with New City, it was, I believe, in January um, of 2017, which was a few months before launch. And one thing that really helped is after we came on board, we met Dylan and Christina. They said, you know, it was whatever day of the week it was. They said, come on over on Sunday. At that time, we're meeting at your house. Yes. Said, come on over on Sunday. And we all meet every Sunday morning. And it wasn't like, you know, we're going to have these meetings this, this at this date or anything right. like that. It was just every Sunday we're here. So if you can make it this Sunday, it's great. If not coming next Sunday. And it was just, it was great to be able to, to plug in right away. See that, see that there are other people there. I think that's, you know, if you're talking about people, talking to people about joining your team, if you have other people, I mean, you got to start somewhere, but if you have other people, it's important for new people to see that they exist. <laughs> um, and it just really helped. I mean, not knowing you guys, that happens a lot where, you know, you may bring someone on who hasn't known you for a long time. We didn't know them and never heard Dylan preach before. Didn't really know much of anything about the church. And so giving that, being given that opportunity to come on board and actually see like, hey, this is how he preaches. This is the kind of stuff they believe without just having to like read through all their values or just hear them tell me right. what I want to hear was, was really important and really helped us, you know, stick yeah so again a consistent and that was help because if you had come along we were doing these monthly monthly launch team nights it's kind of like well when does this ever happen right <laughs> so a consistent time where your team can meet together is important also say build momentum closer to launch we'll talk a little bit a second and time about timeline um but you know every every sunday towards at least a few months before launch we were meeting um but try to build momentum not just consistently but doing things like you don't want to be doing a bunch of stuff nine months out and you're not going to launch yet. It's like, well, you should either launch or, I mean, it's just like, what's happening here? Um, so here's another thing we talk about is that don't don't act like a formal church service before you've launched or let's just be honest, you've already launched. So some people, <laughs> right. they'll start meeting on Sundays, which Sunday evening, Sunday morning is what we did. It's like, if we're going to be, a, if we're going to eventually be a church to start meeting on Sunday morning so we can actually gather together. Um, but some of that time was spent, we sang a few songs, we had, a, had a guy bring his guitar, and, or so we bring his guitar, sang a few songs, and then we, we did some messages, but then we just did more, we were like, well, we actually switched it to more doing vision casting. Here's what we want to do. Here's what's coming up. You don't need to feel the pressure of like having a formal church service. But what I see a lot of church planners do is they'll get into their space, or maybe they're going to launch in their house, whatever, that's fine. And they'll have a church service, and they'll say they haven't launched yet. And it's like, well, you but you have, like you're right. acting like you've launched. Just <laughs> yeah. so to tell people you haven't launched when you have launched, like you can't do everything the same. Like for us, uh, we were not launching in our house. We were waiting for our space, you know, to get our to, to get our lease, that sort of thing. So it was very obvious that when we launched, we, you know, it was going to look very different than meeting in our house. So there needs to be very tangible markers about what you're doing now, how that's going to be different from when you launch. Otherwise, you've launched and your people know that you've launched. And then when you try to build all this momentum around launching, it's like, oh, this is not new. We've been doing this. It's really hard to do. So you can sing a few songs. You can preach a little bit. You can do vision casting, but don't act like a normal, like you would if it was a normal service. And uh, yeah, and be honest, like, hey, we haven't launched yet. But yeah. if you say you haven't launched yet and you're doing songs and messages and you've got people serving in places like you've launched. So build momentum, meet consistently, um, but also don't act like you've launched if you haven't, uh, which goes to the timeline. So yep. 
how far out should you start doing all of these things? I would say a lot of this depends on context and all that sort of thing. It's really hard to say, generally speaking, but I'll just tell you what we did. Um, I, well, here's, here's what I would do. What we did is a long story and I would totally do it different. Now, um, I would say if you're going to launch in the fall, let's just say September, for example, I would start telling people seven months. I mean, people would know it's kind of coming up, but I would start going public about six or seven months out and say, we are launching on this Sunday in September. Because the problem for us is we didn't have that. We had, we we're going to try to launch about this time. And it was so, it's already hard enough to get people to buy into something that's not there. But then they have them buy in and they don't even know when it's actually going to happen is a problem. Now, the downside is if you don't launch on time, it could be detrimental. But if you push it a few weeks, especially as time gets closer, that's fine. Not the end of the world. If you're going to push it six months or a year anyway, well, you shouldn't be, I mean, you've got other issues. So right. I would say, here's the Sunday we're shooting for. That's what we did. Once we said, you know what? No, no matter what, we're launching April 1st, 2017. Second. Second. I don't yep. even know. <laughs> April 2nd, 2017. We're going to do it. Man, the the attitude on our team just sh just completely shifted, completely changed because people knew that it was happening. And if people know it's happening, they're more likely to commit and to invite their friends and to get invited or to invite their friends to serve, to get plugged in because they know something's actually happening, which I think going back to your point is what helped you guys stick. Yep. Yeah. It's important to, for people to be able to see what's happening, see that you're making tangible steps. And I mean, it doesn't mean that, um, you know, say you're however long out and you have two people there that you got to start meeting right away so that you can show people that you have something, right. you know, obviously there needs to be people to meet, to be able to meet. Uh, but being able to show people whatever that looks like that you are taking those next steps and being able to kind of let people in on the process, I think is a big deal. Yeah. Now, now this, that being said, if you're going to say, Hey, we're launching in six or seven months, you've done a lot of the work of like the vision, the mission, which all that's already planned. Right. But when you're going public, have a couple of vision nights, interest meetings, whatever you want to call it, and then start meeting consistently in some way so that people know that something's happening and that they can invite their friends to. So I would say, here's, here's our goal, which takes faith. This may not work, but you need to be prepared. That's a whole other conversation of what it looks like to be prepared. But when you start going public and starting telling people, say, here's our goal, let's get on board. When we actually said, hey, we're launching April 2nd and we're just doing it, again, the attitude in our team completely shifted because up until that point, we're like, oh, we're going to try, but we're not sure. Um, so I would say, have a defined time for when you're, for your timeline. Um, and that being said, how far out should you start meeting? This is just based on our experience. I would say six or seven months. Consistently start meeting, start doing stuff in the community, um, get your team together so they can meet one another. Because part of the thing is too, if you're not meeting consistently, you can't be a church because the church is a local body. Right. And people need to start being, being able to build relationships with each other. So again, uh, create a consistent time to gather pre-meeting. Um, don't build, uh, build momentum closer to launch to have more stuff going on. Don't act like you've launched if you haven't, because if you say you haven't launched, but you're acting like you've launched, people will assume you've launched. They're not going to get excited about it. Have a defined timeline. And I would say about six or seven months. Um, and again, it's another conversation about what your meeting should look like and all that sort of thing. But that's some advice, quick advice without knowing anyone's specific situation yeah. of what I would say. And I think an easy way to start meeting and we can, you know, we might get into this in more detail in another episode, but if you're like, I'm not sure what this looks like because I don't have a I don't have a worship guy yet. I can't you know really have like music and stuff. I'm trying to figure out what this looks like to start meeting regularly. Small groups are just an easy way to start meeting. You can have people get together, go through a study. Right. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to write a sermon every week. It doesn't have to be this right. huge deal. It's just something. Again, it doesn't need to be a church service. Right. It's okay. Like it's not blasphemous. God will be okay with you having a few <laughs> months where you don't have four songs and a message. Like right. you're you're trying to build something for the long haul. And a lot of times us that plant churches and are involved in church planning are not the most patient people, but it'll be okay. Yep. And one of the biggest things that we took away from those weekly meetings was the relationships that we built there. It wasn't yep. necessarily the the messages or, you know, what was being taught at each of those weeks totally. or the vision that was even being casted. It was getting to know people that we didn't know before, getting to build those, those relationships. And those are the ones that lasted, you know, and that stuck all the way till today. And here's a fast, here's a really funny story that I always share. And I feel like when I was planning a church, I always wanted to hear people's stories. Um, we had a, a family that was on board from the very beginning. Like they were one of the first people to say, we're in. We all, When you're planning a church, you need money, right? We always talked about we need money, fundraising, that sort of thing. It wasn't until we started meeting consistently on Sundays that they started giving. Oh, yeah. Because they, <laughs> they, they didn't think that we needed it. Like they were still kind of going to the church that they kind of went to, but they weren't really plugged into. <clears throat> still giving to that church that they kind of went to, but really weren't plugged into. And like, oh, when we started meeting together, that's, this was like six months after we had started. Again, our story is crazy. But like, I was like, like what? <laughs> but again, it helps people understand and it gives them something, gives them something tangible to hold yeah. on to until you launch. It legitimizes things. To right. People. So, yeah. hey, that's a little bit about uh, what you should look like for meetings before launch. If you have questions specifically that you want us to cover about this or anything about church planning or ministry, 
head to practicalplanning.com slash questions so we can answer it in a future episode. And that'll do it for this time. We'll see you later on Practical Church Planning. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode of Practical Church Planning. Make sure you subscribe below so you don't miss future episodes. And also go to practicalplanting.com to submit questions that we can answer. And if you're tired of looking at our ugly faces, you can listen to these episodes through podcasts, through iTunes or Google Play, and make sure not just to listen, but to also subscribe. See you next time.